So in strawberry, for example, uh, much of the strawberry in the UK is grown in the soil, um, and often growers they tend to irrigate um, just as just as they've always done. They don't necessarily know how much water they're applying. Some are very water conscious, others less so. Um, so we sent out a questionnaire to try and find out how much water, average water, these growers were using. And to produce one ton of class one strawberries, the average UK figure in terms of water use was 78 tons of water. So over two years, over two seasons, they used 78 tons of water to produce this one ton of class one fruit. Um, some of the more water conscious growers used between 45 and 50 tons. Some of the ones at the other end use anything up to 160 tons. So you can see there's a very wide range in water use efficiency. Um, so our aim, of course, is to help all the growers move up the water use efficiency ladder. What we want to do is to help them improve their water use efficiency without reducing yields or quality. So we've conducted many trials here at East Marling in the last five or six years, and under very scientific conditions, we can reduce the amount of water used to produce a ton of class one strawberries from 78 tons down to less than 10 tons. So that's an 85% saving, 75%, 85% saving in water. Um, which especially for strawberry growers in the south and in the east of the UK where I say there's very high demand on a finite water supply that's a big saving in water. Of course it's very important that we do that without affecting yield and quality. Um, in actual fact we want to maintain class 1 yields but also if possible we want to try to improve various aspects of fruit quality such as flavour, uh, shelf life potential, uh, firmness so there's less susceptibility to bruising. And we found that by altering the way we irrigate, um, by putting water on at specific times in the right place, we can not only maintain yield, but also improve things like fruit quality and shelf life potential. So, so at the moment then we're transferring that knowledge out into the industry this year. We're conducting grower trials um, where we're developing, testing our irrigation regime that we've developed for these marlings. And so far we've delivered between 30-35% savings in water for those growers without affecting yield or quality. Now many strawberry growers or soft fruit growers and also um, tree fruit growers, they also add fertilizers of course at the same time as they irrigate. So, so if we can save 30-35% of the water, that also translates into 30-35% of savings in fertilizer costs. And that will be the key driver for many growers, because as you all know fertilizer costs are going up and up and up and they're not likely to come down again. So if we can deliver those sorts of savings, that's a direct uh, saving to the grower, but also of course it helps him or her farm more sustainably. So, so we're doing uh, this sort of research in many different crops. Obviously we now we've just started doing this for the first year in our concept pear orchard. Uh, you'll hear from Graham a little later on about the different systems that we've got here, four different growing systems. Um, but essentially the idea is that each of these growing systems will have a very different canopy structure as you'll see when you go around the orchard. Um, and of course if they've got a very different canopy structure, it stands to reason then they may well have very different water requirements and therefore rates of water loss and therefore they'll need specific irrigation regimes. Of course in a concept pear orchard such as this, it's absolutely um, reliant on irrigation. Irrigation is a key factor in any orchard of, of this sort of intensity. So again it's important we try to develop methods for growers to help them use their water efficiently because most of the tree fruit growers farm in the areas, again, where water is under increasing stress.